Hi, this is John Landis, Applications Engineer with Trimex Solutions. Today I'm going to show you one technique for leveraging top-down assembly modeling in SolidWorks. Strictly speaking, this example is actually a middle-out technique as we're going to add an in-context feature and a part that's already in our assembly. It's important to remember that when we work with assembly models in SOLIDWORKS, we lose none of our part modeling capabilities and only gain assembly modeling capabilities. In fact, it is just that flexibility that will allow me to locate and create a feature in our bracket while we are in our assembly. If we take a look at this yoke, you can see that there is a bore through that yoke that's meant to pick up a shaft. But we do not have a hole in our bracket that allows the shaft to pass through. We could calculate the location of that hole in our bracket using trigonometry or some other um, tedious solution, but instead we're going to use top-down assembly modeling to locate the hole in our bracket based off of the location of the bore in our yoke. The first step, of course, is to start editing our part. And now that we're editing this part, I'll simply start a sketch on the appropriate face and then use our sketch tool of offset entities. What's cool about this is, is that I can select edge geometry that is not in our current part. For example, the circular edge of the bore. And now take a look what happens. SolidWorks has taken that circular edge, projected it, to the location where I'm sketching and then imposed that hundred thou offset. It is important to note that the projection of that edge to our current sketch plane always occurs perpendicular to the sketch plane. So we want to locate our parts appropriately before we execute on this particular technique. If this circular edge in our yoke was not parallel to the sketch plane, the resulting sketch geometry would be an ellipse rather than a circle. Now notice that we get a circular sketch that is fully defined and we can simply exit our sketch and execute our extrude cut operation to give us a, a hole located at the precise correct location. I'm basing the location of the hole in our bracket off of the location of the hole in our yoke. When I exit part edit mode you will see that this associativity between the location of the yoke and the location of the hole in the bracket is honored and maintained. If I decrease this value, say, to 1.875, when I rebuild, notice that the hole in the yoke, or rather the hole in the bracket, has updated to reflect the new location of the hole in the yoke. This, my friends, is the essence of top-down modeling. I'm locating the hole in the bracket part based off of the location of the hole in the yoke and it is honoring and maintaining my design intent all the while. I hope you find this helpful. Again, John Landis, Trimex Solutions. Look forward to helping you again.